Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Raw Life Health Show. And we have another video to make about what's happening in the raw food world today and what's going on with the raw food diet. I've been eating a raw vegan diet almost 30 years now. And there are a lot of YouTubers out there now that have been doing it for a much shorter time, giving a lot of advice about the raw vegan diet. And I want to just look at some of these videos and talk about what people are saying. And from my experience of doing this for almost 30 years of what I agree with and disagree with, and some things I'm seeing being said that uh, are, are setting people up for disaster, and some of the things are pretty uh, interesting that people have come to the same conclusion so early in their walk that I've come after many years. Now, when I first got into eating a raw vegan diet, uh, I was just going crazy interviewing everyone. And I wrote a book called The Raw Life, which was interviews with people who have been eating a raw vegan diet for a very long time. And that was about 1999 that I wrote that book and interviewed the people back then who had been doing a raw vegan diet for about 20 years or so. So I met a lot of people. I interviewed a lot of people back then. And I stayed friends with many of them over the years. Some of them went on to continue to thrive. Some of them didn't. Some of them actually got sick or died or got off the diet. And that was after doing it for 20 years or so. So I learned a lot about the mistakes people make and things that uh, tr people should avoid and so on. So I was looking around uh, at uh, the internet recently and I saw this video by Julian Berry, who... I really appreciate she has a lot of interviews with a lot of people, people in the raw food diet that are new to this and also people that have been doing this a long time. I get my information through interviews. That's why I wrote my book and I and just get so much information by interviewing people. So I really appreciate the hard work that Julian is doing by uh, interviewing so many people. So the, the videos are excellent. Her channels, I'll put the link below. Good information. Now, a lot of the people she interviews uh, have only been doing this for a short while. She does get some great interviews with people that have been eating a raw vegan diet or a vegan diet for many, many years. And that's where the real uh, knowledge comes in. They're excellent. Those videos with people that are new to this diet or have been doing it for one year, they're, they're okay. When we'll look at some of them. They're okay. Uh, but check out the channel and see for yourself uh, what you think uh, you can use to help you or not help you. I'm excited. People are, are getting excited about the raw food diet. And Julian Berry is one of the uh, most popular people on the internet right now promoting the raw food diet. So I so appreciate that. Sometimes, most of her videos are interviews. Uh, but sometimes she makes videos just giving her own opinion on things. And this one was a recent one where she talks about the three mistakes she thinks people are making on a raw vegan diet. And I want to comment on this. I want to reply to this video and see some of the things she's saying. Uh, so let's, let's, let's look at that today as I'm, I'm getting into responding or reacting to some videos uh, by people that have been doing this uh, for a little while, but much less than I have been doing it. And the thing is, the thing that's interesting is, after 29 years or so of eating uh, this way, most people that uh, have been doing it this long, or, or even longer, are not computer savvy enough. You're not out there. Dr. Fred Bishy. A uh, person that is in his 90s, who's a good friend of mine, and I've interviewed many times. He's been on a raw vegan diet for over 60 years. Even Brian Clement from Hippocrates Health Institute, uh, Victoria Skovinskis, and all these other long-time raw foodists, they don't know about the internet. They don't know how to use the internet. And so they're not going to be able to make videos like this. But I was able to learn how to use the internet and also had this experience. I got in just in time to learn when the internet started. Uh, I, I could have just been like, I'm not interested in that. Or it was just right. So now I can make videos like this. Replying to people like Julian and other people uh, who are making videos. And just to try to help you 
to see what they're saying and react to it and reply to it. So uh, here we go. In this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about the top three reasons why I think people fail on a raw vegan diet. So a raw vegan diet. Now, right off the bat, she said the top three reasons. Uh, I think it would have been good if she would have said three reasons or three common reasons. But she said these are the three top three reasons. So she's setting herself up now, meaning there's nothing worse than these three. These are at the top. So let's consider that and then let's continue to see what she says could potentially change your entire life and just make you live your absolute best life like it has done for me. So you might be making these mistakes and that's why I wanted to make these, this video. I think these are super common and some that people don't even realize. So if you guys don't watch my channel and don't know me, my name is Jill and the raw vegan diet personally changed my life more than anything I've ever experienced in this planet so far. In 2012, I had a lot of health problems. None of the doctors could figure out what was up. And finally, after the 18th doctor, he said, maybe you have celiac. So that's when I removed gluten from my diet. And that sort of started my interest in health and nutrition and realizing just the impact food has on our body. When I removed gluten alone, my brain fog left and I felt like a whole new freaking human being. So that's what started things for me. And then once I found the raw vegan diet, it was September 1st, 2016. Guys, it's like insane how good I felt. I'm glad she got into eating this way, uh, uh, similar to my story. I had an illness, inflammatory bowel disease, and I tried everything. I got to do the doctor too well. So right off the bat, you know, it's one thing is when somebody's doing this because they've overcome a personal uh, struggle themselves uh, with a health challenge, there's more passion into it. It's more of a passion than a business. So uh, I'm glad she gave a little background of her story of how she got into this or why she got into this. And that, that speaks a lot when somebody's overcome cancer or some other celiac or some other disease with this diet. It really does help the message because the story is, is a personal one. It's not just, oh, this is a way to reach people and make money. So uh, whenever you find somebody that's talking about a cure or healing from an illness, maybe something you have. Look at their personal background with it. It's not across the board that somebody that didn't have a healing like that uh, is is not great to listen to. But when somebody has a story to back it up, there's something extra to it. So let's continue to hear what she has to say. And it's been such a journey ever since. So it's been seven years. I feel amazing, you guys. I have so much energy every single freaking day. And that's because of the raw living foods. I'm not eating cooked foods, which lack the water and lack the enzymes. I'm eating raw living life force foods. And so I feel living raw, amazing like my... Now, okay. So she mentioned raw living life force foods. There are different types of raw foods. Some of them are called live foods and some of them are raw foods. Raw foods is anything that's not cooked, but a life force food is something that's alive. It's like sprouts and, and, and foods that have probiotics and things like this. So there, even within the raw food, there's a different levels. Uh, the live food, the life food, a long time raw food is I interviewed a Reese LaTom, don't like the, doesn't like the term raw food. He calls it the, the life of food or the live food. The food isn't, the life isn't the food. So Brian Clement at Apocalypse Health Institute talks about the sprouts and the living foods versus raw food. So there is a difference. Now, I'm into juicing and I love juicing and I love green juices. So it's really cool that she has a green juice here. She's talking about juicing uh, and I'm, 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 Always looking forward to hear what people are saying about the raw food diet and why people, they think people fail because I want to people, see people succeed. So let's continue to hear Julian's top three reasons why she thinks people fail at the raw vegan diet. Self. So let's get into these top three reasons. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you don't already. I produce great content on here, a lot of amazing interviews and podcasts and so much stuff that you don't want to miss. And we're in Chicago today. I'm so excited. This is my first time in this city. And even as a raw vegan, I always make it work on the road traveling. 
So my number one reason why I think people fail on the raw vegan diet is not being prepared. So that is one that kind of comes into play with me in Chicago. So if you're not prepared, you're likely going to fall off track. I think one of the keys to success in any area of our life is being prepared. So that's especially true on the raw living foods diet. No matter where I go, I'm prepared. I have my green juices, my apples, my fruits everywhere. You guys, if I'm going to somebody's house, you have to be prepared because on most corners in this world, it's like coffee shops and fast food, and it's not the type of foods like this. So it's really important because I think if you're not prepared, you might get hungry and then you might just tell yourself in your head, oh, who cares? Screw it. I'll Excellent point. Excellent point. And uh, I think this is a, a, a a really important thing and and like julian said in life i t teach organization is one of the keys to success in every area of life organization and discipline will get you everywhere uh but uh you know she talked about the diet and being prepared i remember uh, when i was first uh, trying to stay on a raw vegan diet i used to make my own salad dressing and go to a, a restaurant or a diner with other people and i used to just get a diner salad and take out my nice raw food dressing and put it on that crappy salad uh, and so on. So uh, being prepared is, is definitely, I wouldn't say one of the reasons people fail. Now, here's the thing I want to mention. Julian is 100% raw, I believe. I believe. I don't know. She talks like she's 100% raw and claims to be, I think. I could get wrong because I think I heard her say, Somewhere she ate cooked food recently and she had a reaction to it because it's been a while. Uh, so I don't know if she claims to be 100% raw or not, but I, I think she is and pushes it. I could be wrong on that. But here's the thing. This is important for people to know. Being prepared is helpful. However, thinking you need to be 100% raw is the problem that's setting yourself up for. For downfall, I'm oh, I'm 100% raw, and I'm all in favor of 100% raw. I think it's the best of the best, and it's great. However, it's not for everyone. There, and I don't mean from a physical health standpoint. I don't think there's any better way to do it than 100% raw vegan uh, if you do it the right way. But from a life standpoint. For example, uh, if you're 100% raw, you want to maintain your 100% raw, but you're living in like Minnesota or something, you know, look, a cup of soup is going to be better than a raw food candy bar from every standpoint of health or life. But if your friends are going out and, and, and you, you've eaten raw all week and you want one cooked meal, the reason why I like 100% raw is you get rid of that cooked feeling and that cooked desire and those cravings. You get rid of them after a while. They say uh, three weeks, uh, you create new habits. So you get rid of those. So, so that's nice. That's why I like 100% raw. But having to put yourself in a position where you need to be prepared, what happens when you're not? So that can be a problem. You know, I think unless somebody's overcome an illness like myself, where if I, I didn't eat all raw, I can get sick again. And even that might, might not be true to the highest degree, but I don't want to test it and find out. I think eating mostly raw for most people, is wonderful. And then they don't have to worry about this situation of, oh, I'm in a situation where I, I there's nothing raw I can eat, so I'm setting myself up for failure. Or, you know, I got to be prepared. Because being prepared is wonderful when it comes to this diet, but, you know, you're not always going to be prepared, so what are you going to do? And if you eat cooked food, are you going to consider yourself a failure? So I think if your goal is to be 100% raw, being prepared is wonderful. But I think one of the important things should be is not setting yourself up for needing to be 100% raw. 80 or 90% raw is great. Or letting yourself eat raw as much as possible. But just being open to the idea is if I'm in a situation where I, I want to eat, I want to be social or something and I can't get raw, I want to educate myself to know what the best examples are or the best things are that I can eat that might not be raw, but they're the least harmful and the best vegetarian or vegan options besides that. So if I do eat cooked food, I haven't failed. I'm not a failure. Uh, but organization is a key. And, and, and Julian said she's been doing this for seven years. So she's successful at it. And again, if you want to be 100% raw, you must be prepared. But here's the thing. 
this is the thing. When I first started eating this way, I had to be prepared. I had to go out there with my salad dressing or had to have some fruit or some nuts on me in case I wasn't able to get raw food somewhere. Now, after doing this for this many years, preparing for me is like, look, if the food's not available, I'm just going to fast. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to miss a meal. I don't need to go around with a uh, a juice in my pocket or <laughs> an apple in my pocket or something in case I, I need it. Preparing for me is now where I'm going to fast if I have to or I don't need to eat. It's like, okay, like if I'm going in an airplane and I, I'd like to bring food sometimes, but if I don't, I'm not going to say, oh, I wasn't prepared. What am I going to do now? I'll say, well, I just won't eat. You don't need to eat every meal. So so, so that's what I've learned over the years. Uh, when I first started, being prepared was great, but now it's like, well, what do I got to prepare for? I, I just won't eat if I, if I can't find food. So so I guess it depends where we're at. Uh, you know, I think when we when I, seven years, I was thinking the same way Julian's thinking here, or Ju, uh, Julian's thinking here. So, uh, so good point. Be prepared. Uh, it's one of the reasons people fail, but I gave you my insight of why people fail as well. So uh, let's continue. I'll go off track. I'll get something. And then just one thing, and it could lead you to the other side. I know somebody that had a lot of health problems and then they got really healthy through, through the raw living foods diet. It reversed all their problems. And then they were just like, oh, I'll have a cheat day at this barbecue because they don't have food for me. And then like 10 years later, they were still eating that. They never got back on track. So even that one cheat day can throw you off. So just always be prepared. I think it's so key. And I think that's one of the hu one of the biggest reasons that people fail on this lifestyle. My second reason why I think people fail, and this is a huge one. I think this might be definitely the biggest one, why people don't thrive and why people say they don't feel good and why they leave the lifestyle. So this is not eating enough. This is absolutely huge. I've learned this myself and I've learned this from all the people I've interviewed on my channel. I've interviewed so many amazing people, you guys, if you haven't already seen all the interviews. And a huge thing that a lot of people have said, especially people who coach and people who do recipes and stuff like that, they've said, I noticed people were not thriving. They were not thriving at all. And then I told them they need to eat more food and then they started thriving. So it is so, so important. On now, this one's an interesting one. So most of the people that are making recipes online and coaching online are relatively new to the raw food diet. I don't know too many people that are coaching or making videos of recipes online that have been doing this for more than 10 years. There might be some out there, but like I said earlier, most of the people that are in the raw food diet for a long time, they're not internet savvy. Most of the people are uh, under 10 years into the raw diet that are all over the internet with the raw foods. Uh, so... Uh, the people that Julian has spoken to and said to eat more is pe are, are people that are probably doing this for less than 10 years or so. I think as you start speaking to the old timers, the people that have been doing it much longer, including myself, I mean, eating enough, the word enough is, is, is very uh, interesting. Enough, according to who? Enough for the for you or enough for what? Because me, now, as I've been doing it this long, I'm eating less than I ever ate before. You know, and when I first started, I was I was overeating. I was overeating for a long time. And I think one of the dangers of the raw food diet, or one of the issues is, one of the issues, I'll say, I won't say dangers, like issues is, people are eating too much. And you can't eat too much of something. Too much, enough, or too little, these are all subjective words because it's going to be the number might be different for everyone but eating more than you need or eating less than you need these are are issues because anything less or more than you need is excess or or depletion or um, the body's gonna to have to detox or be depleted or something so you know so eating enough from a, from a standpoint of when you eat cooked food, you get a certain pleasure. You get a certain feeling. And when you stop eating cooked food and you eat the raw foods are so much lighter, 
the food tastes great, but sometimes you don't get that same weighed down feeling as the, the cooked food might give you, which is good. If you have too much of that feeling, it might actually put you to sleep. <laughs> too much of the cooked food. Raw food, you don't really get that, that sleepy feeling, but you don't always get that feeling where you're satisfied and full. So a lot of the books I read by the old timers doing this, uh, they were like, never eat till you're full. Uh, you know, always stop eating before you're full. And a lot of the uh, the new people doing this now, I see people saying, well, make sure you eat enough until you're full. Uh, you want to be full, you know, so you're not craving more food and so you don't go looking around for other food. So it's quite interesting. And a big thing of the thing I focus us on is the is the amount of food and overeating. I see more people harming themselves with overeating than undereating. So, and a lot of people have food disorders or food eating disorders. And they just, they can't stop eating. They're not getting pleasure from where they need to in life. So they just, they're overindulging in food. And... You know, so, you know, enough, what kind of, you know, it's a subjective, a subjective thing. I would say at the beginning, maybe people have trouble finding out how much they should be eating. But, but I found out that most people that stick with a raw food diet, and when I say that, I mean, if you're just starting out for a month or so or two months, that's nothing. That's just, oh, I'm just a little, little cleanse or something. But if you're doing this for more than a year and then you keep it staying into it and you're doing this and now you got to find out your balance of, of what you should be doing. But for my, what I see out there, most people that are doing the raw food diet are eating too much or more than they need. And that excess is going to, create problems with their body. So so it's interesting that that Julian's found so many people and thinks the pitfall that people aren't doing enough. You know, so that's interesting. Let's continue to hear what she has to say about this. On this lifestyle that you have to eat a lot of food. You have to eat more quantities of food than the standard American diet. If you're not, you will not be thriving. It's just like when I do a juice fast, I recently did a nine day juice fast, a juice cleanse. It was. I don't agree with that. I think uh, <laughs> I eat less now than I ever ate and I feel better than I've ever felt. So eating more is not the answer. I don't think I think eating good quality food is important, but you see, the thing is when we're eating low quality food, like cooked food, our body's not getting the nutrients we need. So we're always going to want to eat more because we got to satisfy those nutrients. So we got to eat more to, to get what we need. But when we're eating the high quality food, I find we need less, not more, because there's so many nutrients in that food. Now, calories is another story. I never really count calories, but you, you want to get enough calories to, to carry out your daily task. Um, but, you know, but, but this is an interesting one that she's come to these conclusions, but you know, and all, here's the thing, all our minds are going to change. Our ideas are going to change because we evolve. We, 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 uh, we get new understanding of things. We run into roadblocks, you know, by the time I was seven years into this, I had changed several times and I still changed and still do change. So I have uh, found, you know, not to stick, this is going to work for everyone or something when it comes to this type of way of eating of how much we should eat, how much of this balance or how to do the raw food diet. I tell people with everything, even people that aren't eating raw, even people that are eating standard American diet, I say, do what works for you. If it's working, great. If it's not working, the only way you're going to get some success is to change what you're doing. Insanity is the definition is doing the same thing and expecting different results. So I say, do what works for you. Somebody tells me, oh, I eat a standard American diet. I eat meat. I eat all this stuff. I say, if it's working for you, there's no reason to change. Now, what I teach people and what I want people to understand is how do you know it's working? You can't just go by how you feel because you can take crack and feel good for a little while through stimulation. But how are you going to feel the rest of the time? 
You know, because the stimulation, you could feel a certain way, but there has to be other aspects of what is truly healthy or not healthy, or if it's working for you. And that's what I teach in a lot of my videos is how do you know it's working for you? So uh, let's hear more about uh, this not eating enough. It was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had this time around. And, and that is because I feasted. I didn't fast. I drank at least eight to 10 huge 32 ounce jars a day. If I was just drinking two or three jars, I wouldn't have been thriving. So the same goes for the raw vegan diet in my. I don't know what Julian considers thriving. And I'm not talking bad about anything here, but I don't know what she's considering thriving. But eight to 10 juices a day, you're not achieving what you think you're achieving in terms of the healing process of the body. Two or three juices a day during a fast is fine. Eight to 10 juices a day, it is feasting. It's not, it's not overeating, but it's over drinking. <laughs> You got to consider that. I mean, it's hard to overdrink because it's just juice. But you can, like I said, doing more than you need. Now, I'm not going to argue with somebody who's having their results. If Julian says she was thriving, that's great. That's great. I'm not going to disagree or argue with her own feeling for her own body and her own experience. I'm just sharing my experience as somebody who's been doing this for uh, for a long time, a lot longer than many of these YouTubers out there. So try to help you think about these things. So I just think to consider, that's why I'm making these videos and I want to comment on these videos. I want you to consider what people are saying and what you're doing. From my experience and also from the experience of the the people that have been doing this much longer than me even, they would not promote 8 to 10 times a day juicing and consider it the ideal way to do it now there are some people that want uh some places of healing that might have i think it was a gershon clinic that would have oh have massive amounts of, of of juicing and then there's other people that promote a lot of carrot juice or celery juice and, and flood your body with this juice for certain times of cleansing in terms of healing from a disease or something else but in general what i found is the, the, the less we eat by getting the nutrients is the way to go. Giving your body the, the most nutrients while making it work the least to get them. And the type of food to do that is raw foods, the living foods. And, and that's it. Now, when we give our body more than we need, then it has to work more. But this, this is... I remember, I'll tell you this while we're talking about this. I was at a in California at a, at a an event with Dr. Fred Bishy, and I was I was going to do a, a a juice fast for a day or a couple of days, and I had one juice, then I had another juice, then I had a 16 ounce juice, and then I had a 32 ounce juice. And he's like, "What are you doing? What are you doing? You know, you're trying to fast for for the reason of fasting, and you're adding a juice." Okay, it's not a water fast, you're adding a juice, but 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 how much are you gonna juice? You don't need that much. So that's just been my experience. And uh so again, I'm not coming against what Julian's saying here. I'm just sharing my experience as somebody who's been doing this longer. My opinion. Okay, you guys. So this video is all my personal experience and opinion, but you have to eat a lot of food. I cannot drill this in enough and don't compare to the portions that you grew up with, with the standard American diet or the portions you get at drive throughs or things like that. Just eat in abundance and don't be afraid to eat. Eating is amazing. I love it. I love eating large quantities of food and eating more often. So as soon as you're hungry, eat. And then when you're full, stop. It's really simple, but definitely. So that again is uh, not. The way I see things here, I, I used to say, and I used to say often, we should eat when we're hungry and stop when we're not. But because of emotions and other reasons, we're always hungry. We're always looking for food. People are eating too much. I have found, and I wrote a book on the Daylight Diet that talks about this. The key to success, the key to long-term health, is eating two meals a day, not eating in between. If you're hungry in between, have a juice not eating in between, not eating late at night. Try not to eat when it's dark outside, but definitely not eating late at night. 
not eating before you go to sleep, but two meals a day, three at most, not whenever we feel hungry. That word hungry is so subjective because, you know, there are so many things that could drive us to be hungry, but no one truly in the civilized world today is. Maybe in, in, in countries, civilized countries, or not civilized countries, what's a better word to say, uh, advanced countries, have true hunger. They're feeling a habit hunger because they're in a habit of eating all the time. So they got this habit hunger. They want to eat because it's a habit. If you eat 9 o'clock p.m. every night for 10 years, and no matter how much you've eaten in a day, 9 o'clock comes, you're going to want to eat. It's a habit. It's not really a hunger. And but hunger means we need we need food or we're going to be in trouble. So there's the hunger of the cessation of the emotional level, and then there's the true hunger that's like you need to eat. You're on borderline starvation. But I, I I think it's not the best way to go about it to say just eat when you're hungry, <laughs> because uh, you can definitely end up overeating. I, I prefer to have set meal times. I prefer to have a schedule and talk about being prepared. I, I like to have, okay, this is the time I get up. This is the time I want to go to sleep. These are the times I want to eat or at least close to it. Uh, and this is what I'm going to eat, where I'm going to eat it, and, and what I'm going to get and what I'm going to buy. That's being prepared, not just having an apple in my pocket for whenever I'm hungry, I'm going to eat. <laughs> like I told you, I'll fast in that case, but just having a schedule is being prepared. And knowing that I ate here and I'm going to eat here. As for the amount, well, this is our own bodies and our own ex experiments. So we should know how much to eat to get what we need and, and how we feel and all the other aspects of health. But I don't think it's best to say, well, I'm going to eat until I'm full and then stop. That's not what the old timers say. And they, they, they eat before you're full and stop. So... Let's continue. Really make sure you're getting in enough calories and getting in enough food. Okay, and my third reason. Yes, I'll say you want to get enough calories. That is important. Without counting calories, you should know what enough is. But the longer you're doing this, the cleaner you are, and the more you can get away from the emotional impact of food, you don't need a lot of calories. That's the, that's the key here. How many calories do you really need? Me being on a 100% raw vegan diet for a long time, I don't need many calories. Sometimes I hear people doing like four, five, six times the amount of calories I'm doing. And I'm like, it's a lot of food. You don't need that much. And some people say, oh, well, yeah, we're active, so we need more. I don't know too many people that are more active than I am. I'm very active. I'm very active. I exercise, I I do cardiovascular exercise, I I got children, I got you know, I'm running around with them all day, and I'm also I go to the gym, I exercise with weights. I'm very active, but I don't need a lot of calories. I need enough, but not a lot. So the question is, yes, we do need enough calories, but what is enough? All right, let's hear uh, Julian's third reason. And why I dun 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 why I think people fail on this amazing lifestyle that is just so amazing. It could change your whole life if you try it. I just wish, you know what, you guys, before I say it too, if you've been thinking about trying it or anything like that, then I just say to you right now, try it for one week or try it for 30 days. Just try it. You have nothing to lose. Like one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. It's no amount of time. It goes so fast, right? So just give it a try and it might change your entire life. Eat a huge wide variety of raw living fruits and vegetables. Very simple in their natural state. Don't cook them and see how you feel after 30 days. It could totally change your entire life in all areas. Because the thing is, it doesn't just change the way you eat. It changes the relationships. It changes your career in a lot of cases, your success, the way you feel. It changes. It just leads you to all these other health habits that just totally transform you. So anyway... My third reason why I think people fail at this, and this is from somebody who's thriving. I feel like I'm thriving, and I forgot to say at the beginning of the video, I feel like a lot of people ask me, like, how come you're thriving and a lot of people fail? So that was sort of my whole intention with this video. I am thriving, and I feel amazing, and that's because of these points, and I eat an abundance, like I said with one of the points, a huge amount of calories, an abundance of food, a wide variety, and I plan ahead, and I prioritize myself. 
So that brings me into my third point. I think a lot of people are afraid that they're not like everyone else on this diet. So it's a diet that can be isolating and lonely and the rest of the world doesn't eat this way. So that has been probably the hardest struggle for me over the years. It's not anymore at all because I prioritize myself. But I know for a lot of people, they fail at it and they want to leave it because they find it hard because most people don't eat this way. And they look around and they think I miss those connections of like we connect as humans, right? We're tribal people. We connect over the foods, going out to eat, having like the burger, the beers, the pizza. So that's a big thing. And like we need to talk about that more. We need to come together more. I'm in a community, an online private group as well. That's amazing. I will link that down below for you guys if you want to join that. It's helped me so much over the years. It's just a private. Yes, the the social aspect of eating is... uh uh, something that's very important, and I, 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 I like a point here that people uh, miss that connection, that social aspect. Uh, there's a couple of uh, vegan restaurants near me, and some of them have raw food on the menu. And for many, many years, when I would go, I would, you know, entertain people or, or try to create that environment where we would go there, where I know it was on the menu or something. So. Uh, I never really lost the social aspect of it because I always knew place, always around places that had something I could eat if I went out socially. And again, if I found myself in a position where I couldn't eat the way other people ate, you know, I found if I didn't bring up diet, most people wouldn't bring it up either. But if I stood on the table and said, you're all eating terrible, you need to eat this way, then there's a, there's a disconnect. But I thought about it at one point and every of the people I know, like 90% of the people I knew and spoke to on a regular basis as friends and associates were eating the way I was eating. I just created a massive amount of, uh, or, or just happened where all the people around me were eating like I ate. So I didn't really have this social disconnect. Uh, but I know some people uh, don't have access to meet as many people. But now with online communities like the one that Julian was talking about and and others, uh, you can still have that uh, social, emotional connection. Uh, so I'm going to put her link to her website uh, below and also her YouTube channel so you can check it out. But uh, I haven't seen that community, but uh, these raw food communities are, are usually really, really good and helpful. So I definitely recommend you check them out. There's one, uh, I have a, a group on Facebook called Raw Food Diet. It's a group on Facebook, and that's another type of group. Uh, so I, it's it's much easier today to get socially connected, at least online. But the raw food diet in general is not so strange to people anymore. It's quite known. So even in a practical level, it's probably easy to connect with people in the world. Let's continue here and what say what she's saying about the social aspects of eating this way. Space to like connect more with people. So again, I think this is a big reason people fail because they try this and they feel like such an outcast, which is, you do, you can feel like such an outcast. But let me tell you guys, it is worth it, okay? Because although some of your relationships and things in your life will change, it will turn into alchemy, it will lead to better. It has done just that for me. If you can just keep prioritizing yourself and your health. If I had gone back to the other side and my old habits and my old relationships, and still had been drinking beer, drinking wine, eating pizza, all those things. There's no way I would be where I'm at today, physically, mentally, spiritually, career-wise, everything. My whole life has transformed because of how I eat. And that has started with like what I put on the inside. Your life literally starts from the inside out. So to me, that starts with foods. You choose how to feed yourself. So if you're going to choose how to feed yourself, respect yourself, respect your body. And then people, the universe, relationships, everything will show that respect back to you. Eating crap, eating garbage. I know we all like grew up with that and we think it's normal. It's not normal. Your body doesn't like it. Your cells don't like it. There's a huge connection between your gut and your mind and you do not thrive on it. People say, well, how come, look, this person's eating whatever and they're like 80 years old, they're 70 years old, they're still alive. But most of them aren't thriving. These people, I know people that are in their 70s that are, you know, they're around, they're eating that way. And it's like, oh, well, yeah, they've been drinking every day for years. They've been eating this way. They're still there, but they're not thriving. 
the people that I know that take great care of themselves in their 70s, 80s, and 90s, they are absolutely freaking thriving. They're opening restaurants, they're writing new books, they're creating more than freaking 20 year olds. Okay, uh, great encouraging information uh, from Julian. Uh, now, I do want to say is <laughs> it, it really good information and encouraging information. Uh, I don't disagree with what she's saying here. However, there aren't too many people out there in their 70s, 80s, and 90s that are doing a raw vegan diet. And, and there haven't been many, you know, the raw vegans of the past have died pretty much at the same age as people that have been eating the standard American diet. That's just a fact. There aren't. There are a few examples of people uh, who ate somewhat raw and lived a long age, but there was never really anyone who ate. There was never anyone who ate a hundred percent raw who lived that long. I I know a man I interviewed named Stanley Bass, and he lived. Uh, he was uh, over a hundred years old, and he was doing a raw food diet, but it wasn't vegan. Uh, Dr. Fred Bishy, he's a good friend of mine. He's 94 years old, and he's been doing 100% raw vegan for for a long time, and and he's he's truly thriving. But I don't know any other examples of people doing a raw vegan diet, especially 100%. So when Julian says, or Julian, <laughs> Julian says that she knows people or, or people in their 70s, 80s, and 90s. I don't know many people in their 70s, 80s, and 90s who had been eating a 100% raw vegan diet. But yes, what she's saying is true, though. Your cells, your body, everything doesn't want to eat uh, less than the best. It wants the best. The less processed food is going to help us to get to 70, 80, and 90 years old. Dr. Fred B Bishy is one of the few examples, but he sets an example uh, of the bar we can reach and how it can be. Now, the people that have been eating this way or eating a raw food diet, uh, somewhat, very few people doing it 100% for that long, they're not all thriving, and some of them have, have, have not lived longer than any other people. And the reason why is because health is more than just diet. Diet is a tremendously important part of our health, but there's so much more when it comes to our health. I tell people, I don't care how great you're eating. If you're getting up every single day of your life to go to a job you hate, you are not going to be healthy. Besides just what you're eating, you know, what are you wearing? The synthetic fibers versus the natural fibers. How much sleep are you getting or are you sleep deprived? You know, is your bowel habits, are you going to the bathroom on a regular basis? Do you have joy in your life? These things have a tremendous impact on our health and then ex exercise and fitness. I mean, to me, I love sleep, but exercise and fitness, uh, you know, and, 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 uh, as things that are, that are so essential. And I think it's one of the reasons why people fail at the, uh, eating a raw vegan diet is they're not getting enough exercise. It seems like they eat better, so they think they don't have to exercise. They might not have to exercise as much to stay healthy, but being fit is an extremely important part of this. So that would explain why some people that might eat healthy don't succeed as much as other people that do. We need joy in our lives. We need to get rid of the things that are creating major issues. And then uh, a big thing that I have uh, that uh, I know Dr. Bishy has, we have a strong relationship with our creator, the spiritual side of health. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I don't see too many atheists that are live a long life. And a lot of people that live a long life, they might not have the same spiritual uh, understanding as I do, but they still have some spiritual focus. And I think it helps them, you know, with with help, with, with the things they need to do. So these are things to, to consider. The long term or the length of our life or the quality of our life in our older age, it's really an experiment now because a lot of, the, I, I don't know, too many 100% raw vegans that have been doing this for a really long time. But the good thing is you don't need to be 100% raw to be healthy. I do it. Uh, and I, 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 you work at Thriving, I love it. I love it. But, you know, it can create a challenge for other people as well. So think about what you want to do. Think about why. I think it's good if you're new to this to have a good coach or somebody who can help you along the way. 
I, I think we should understand or get to a point where we're eating less, not more. And we want to seek the highest quality foods and try to get rid of processed foods in our diet. Um, but let's let's continue to hear what Julian has to say. So this is your only life in this avatar. I am just trying to encourage you today to make it your best because it all starts with you. No one is going to come save you. No one is in charge of your health but you. No one is in charge of your life but you. And it is amazing. There's a lot of things it feels like we can't control in this world, but we can control how we eat and how we feed ourselves. And that can truly, truly transform your life. So even though with my third point, it can feel like the rest of the world doesn't eat this way, I encourage you not to give up. And if you do have a lonely period of the relationships shifting, which I did, all of my relationships shifted. You guys, my whole life used to be going out like three times a week, two to three times a week, Monday nights at Eden Italian restaurant with wine and pizza with my friends, the weekends in King West in Toronto with bottle service and the booths getting hotels. Like my whole life changed. I literally used to live to go out. I used to go to strip clubs, you guys. Like my life was literally, I used to live to get dressed up and go out, have steaks with people. So this is an interesting point because not only does your, your, your physical body get better, but your, your whole, everything transforms. It really does. When you're eating healthier, you do see life from a different viewpoint. You really do. And it's hard to understand that until you've experienced it. It's like you, you become a new person. You truly do, especially when you overcome a health challenge. You know, it's, it's really, I think being successful at a raw vegan diet long term is more challenging mentally than it is physically. Physically, we just need to eat good food, food that tastes good, food that pleases us. And now there's a lot of recipe books out and a lot of recipes where you can make raw food taste good and pleasing and pleasurable. But mentally, there's that emotional block of, of the person we were trained to be in our lives by eating a lot of processed food and common foods versus now and, and, and just eating a different type of way and just being a different type of person. It's difficult to overcome an illness eat a certain way, and then go back to the person you used to be. And I think uh, Julian has experienced that, uh, and knowing the person she is now and appreciating it so much more. And she came from somewhere that she, I would assume highly that she doesn't like the person she once was. Because now she's so much better. Sometimes, I'm not saying she does this, but we can kick ourselves and say, I wish I would have learned about this sooner. That's why I didn't waste all those years. How much better would things be now? But our experiences are experiences, and uh, we're, we're all young and, and do certain things and then change later on, hopefully, and for the better. And we're just new people and, and, and new changes. So it, it's it's good that she's mentioning this because no matter where you are who you are out there you might be somebody doing a raw food diet for a good amount of years and you just want some tips of how to stay into it and be encouraged by it or maybe you're new to this maybe you're massively overweight maybe you have an illness or something and you're new to this and you just want to know uh, some tips on how to do this and what to watch out for and and what can help me so i i hope these videos uh, that i make on my uh, videos and also Julian and people like her. I hope these videos are encouraging you and helping you uh, to to understand this that uh, live foods foods will have life will enhance your life. The more processed food you eat, the worse off you're going to be. That that's sums it all up right there. Let's hear what uh, Julian has to say now. People, beers and all this. And so I had a period of time where my I felt very, very lonely. But I hung in there, you guys, and now my life is better than ever. It's just like childbirth when it's like, oh my gosh, you're going through hell. Keep going because then you get to heaven and you meet your baby. So maybe not the best analogy, but you guys know what I'm saying. 
Anyway, there's so much more I could say on this because I feel like there's other reasons people fail as well, but I want to leave it at those three. And I just want to give a bonus one too. I don't think people pay enough attention to the variety of foods we need and things like iodine you need and B12 and D. There's other things you need that you can't just, in my opinion, start eating fruits and vegetables and not think about those things. So you want to make sure everything is covered as well. I am a big believer in it at minimum, just checking your blood work. You have to do what's right for you. I know some people that don't supplement and they don't believe in it and they are thriving. And I know other people who don't supplement and didn't, and it absolutely could possibly destroy them and has destroyed them. I'm in agreement. I think it's a good idea to uh, check your blood work. It's a good idea to make the appropriate uh, changes uh, based on uh, if what you're doing is working for you. And we talked about that before. How do you know if what you're doing is working for you? And one of those ways is to check your blood work. That's one of, no matter how you feel, check your blood work. That's, that's one of the very good ways to know if what you're doing is working for you. And I didn't supplement for a while and now I do. And I think it's amazing. I take an all in one. I'll link it down below. And yeah, so that's it for this video. I have other great videos coming up. If you guys want to see more videos like this, with just me like having a conversation with you guys, then let me know. Let me know what you want to see more of. Or do you prefer the podcast with me doing interviews with other people? Let me know. And I just want to know how I can add the most value to you guys and inspire you guys to live better lives. So let me know what topics you want to see covered. And I just want to say I love you guys. It's because of your support. I'm all the way here in beautiful Chicago. We pulled out the beautiful uh, red. All right. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Julian. And uh, I'll put her links uh, below to our uh, channel, her website and a channel below. And again, I'm not here doing this to talk against people. Uh, I'm, I'm here doing this because I want to see people thrive. I want to see people be successful. And I, I want people to learn from other people's mistakes. So, um, um, you know, and I'm going to call people out if, if I see them giving information that uh, I found out not to be good information or information that's not been proven. I like that Julian said and several times that what she's talking about here was her opinion. She wasn't stating it as a fact. She was giving, she said, this is my opinion or my experience. So that leads it open to all have our own opinion, our own experience where there are other YouTubers out there that might say, this is a fact and this is, this is it and so on. And uh, so, uh, and also I'm not making these videos because I claim to be uh, more intelligent than other people or put anyone down, but I just have more experience than people with this particular topic. So it makes uh, what I'm saying a valuable thing. And, and I always listen to people that have been doing this longer than me because I know they have valuable understanding and teachings. So hopefully something I said can help you and maybe even help uh, other YouTubers out there who are doing this much less than me. Uh, make some videos and, and and talk about these things and just open up their mind to these things. And uh, I'll, I'll, if you, is anybody you want me to see a video you want me to react to or respond to, uh, put them in the comments below. And and if there's any topics you want me to do in general, I have a bunch of uh, recipes and a bunch of uh, information on my website. I'm uh, for me, I'm I'm very transparent. And also, I just I really understand how it is to live with an illness because I did and then I have overcome it and I want to stay healthy. So I really want to help people and 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 I'm glad to be here to do this. And thank you, uh, everybody, for watching. Put your comments below. Uh, I've actually have been interviewed by Julian several times and uh, her, her website or YouTube channel is uh, great interviews great interviews uh, i definitely recommend you check them out and uh, just thank you all for being here and if you're not subscribed already please subscribe until then have a great day everybody and a great role life nature's wealth good for your health this is the raw life health show raw life brighten up your life